Okay, so here we have a basic algebraic equation, but really this is a special type of algebraic situation and it goes by a specific name. So I have a couple questions here for you. One, can you solve for x? If you can, put your answer into the comment section. And two, do you know what type of situation this is? Matter of fact, I'll give you a hint. It starts with a P. Okay, so uh, there's a couple different ways you can describe this type of equation in algebra, but the one that I'm going to be talking about uh, starts with a P, and you certainly need to know this in algebra and how to work with these type of equations. So I'm going to show you the correct answer to this equation, and of course we're going to have a quick uh, discussion on this particular uh, type of equation and why it's so important. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need math help, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. I'll leave a link to it uh, in the description below. And if you like this video, if you, if you get some sort of value out of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. Again, we have x over three is equal to one over five. What is x equal to? Well, x is equal to three fifths. Okay, so that's the first part of the um, this question that I asked, because I asked you two questions. So what type of equation is this? Well, we are talking about proportions, okay, proportions. And uh, that kind of is uh, goes with uh, other terms that you've probably heard called ratios and rates. So in typical algebra books and math books, you study rates, ratios, and proportions, rates, ratios and proportions. So what are these things? Well, I'm going to give you a quick crash course on what a proportion is. This is not that difficult. But uh, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus A100 percent and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you know how to solve basic proportion equations in algebra. They won't even know what that means, but it just sounds so cool and impressive. Just tell them anyways. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. So we are talking about proportions. Now, another kind of description for this type of equation would be like an, a rational equation. All right, so that's kind of a different topic. So if you said rational equation, uh, you definitely, you know, uh, you know, did uh, great on that particular question because that would be correct as well. However, what I want you to uh, identify this type of equation um, as is a proportion. So what is a proportion? Well, a proportion is two equal fractions. So in mathematics and algebra, when you see one fraction, and here we have a fraction, of course, the numerator up here is a variable, but it is a fraction. We have one fraction and it's equal to uh, another fraction, just like this, one fraction here, one fraction here, an equal sign. When you have two equal fractions, you have a proportion. That's the definition of a proportion. Now, just real quick, let's talk about these rates and ratios. What are these things? Well, rates and ratios are effectively fractions, uh, and that's a whole other discussion. Uh, if you are studying rates, ratios, and proportions, check out um, either one of my uh, pre-algebra or algebra course. I'll leave all those links in the description below. Plus, I have all uh, sorts of videos on my YouTube channel on these topics as well. But uh, anyways, this is a big deal in math. But uh, we'll kind of table this for another uh, time. We're going to focus on proportions. And again, uh, proportion uh, a proportion is two equal fractions. So let's check out um, uh, this example right here. Here is a fraction, one half. Okay, can we think of another fraction that is equal to one half? Well, there's tons of them, right? So one half you can think of here, four over eight, of course, is one half because when I uh, simplify or reduce this fraction, I get back to one half. But you could have five over 10, you could have 50 over 100. You can go on and on and on. There's all sorts of um, uh, fractions that are equal to one another. But when you do have two equal fractions, you have a particular property that comes to play. So by definition, uh, when you have one fraction equal to another fraction, this, uh, this is a proportion, okay? So I want you to recognize uh, this equation as one fraction equaling to another fraction. Now, the beautiful thing about proportions is there, 
is this uh, awesome property, okay, uh, called the cross product. If you remember, there's other uh, properties about proportions as well, but if you remember this one specific property, you'll be able to solve basically all proportion problems. Okay, so one half is equal to four over eight. What is the cross product? Let me go ahead and show you this right now. Okay, so this is the cross product, okay? So if you just kind of hear the word cross product. So what am I talking about here? Well, I'm gonna be, uh, product indicates what the result of multiplication and cross means you're kind of crisscrossing, okay? So if I multiply across, okay, the cross products are equal in a proportion. So eight times one in this example is what? Well, it's eight, and that is equal to two times four. Okay, you're multiplying across two times four, of course, is eight. So the cross product is always true when you have a proportion. And we can use this fact to uh, solve all sorts of proportion problems, and I'll show you that in just one second. We'll get back to the original problem. Uh, but uh, before we do so, I wanna uh, ask you, give you a friendly reminder so uh, consider subscribing if you're watching this video and you're not already a subscriber. I put a lot of effort into my YouTube channel. I love teaching mathematics, but uh, to grow my channel, I do need your help uh, so I can reach uh, more people. I can teach more people math. So please consider subscribing and hit that notification button as well. That would really help me out. Let's go to continue on with this problem. So here we go, right? So now that we know about proportions, we're like, okay, I got one fraction, here's another fraction. So you're on the lookout for these type of things, one fraction uh, equal to another fraction. You're like, oh yeah, this guy told me this was a proportion. So you can use the cross product, right? So this times this, five times X will be equal to three times one. And we can uh, solve this nice algebraic equation in this manner. So this isn't the only way to solve this type of equation, but um, when you have a proportion, using a cross product is almost always the easiest way to solve. So 5 times x is 5x, and 3 times 1 is 3. All right, so uh, hopefully you're up to speed on your basic algebra. How do we solve for x? Pretty easy. All we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 5. So 3 divided by 5, or 3 fifths, 3 fifths is the answer. Okay, again, this is a big topic. We're talking about uh, proportions, which are related to rates and ratios. Again, rates and ratios are uh, fractions, okay? And there's some technical description. You're basically comparing two numbers and uh, you need to know about units of measure. So uh, anyways, I get tempted to just start teaching. I gotta stop myself, but I do have a lot of information about rates and ratios uh, and complete full instruction in my courses. But uh, this is stuff that you absolutely need to know. Now I try to kind of come up with catchy titles. You better know this. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, you know, this is not an exaggeration. Proportion problems, rate problems, ratio problems are a huge part of mathematics, especially like the pre-algebra level and beyond. So hopefully this little video helps you out. And um, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.